Friction. In this video, we will learn about a new topic called friction. We'll explore different types of friction and learn how to solve problems involving the force required to move an object of a certain weight. What is friction? Imagine we have a flat surface with a box placed on it. When we try to push or pull the box, it takes a certain amount of force to get it moving. But why does this happen? If we look closely at the contact between the box and the surface, we'll see that both the surface of the box and the ground have small irregularities. These irregularities create resistance when the box is pushed or pulled. This resistance is what we call frictional force. When we push the box, the frictional force acts in the opposite direction to our push. Similarly, if we pull the box, the frictional force acts in the opposite direction to our pull. Let's see the type of friction. Typically, the frictional is broadly classified into two categories. Those are static friction and dynamic friction. Static friction. This is the frictional force that prevents the box from moving when we apply a small force. It needs to be overcome to start the motion. Dynamic friction, which is also sometimes called kinetic friction. Once the box is in motion, kinetic friction acts against the direction of movement, but it is usually less than static friction. Dynamic or kinetic friction is further classified into sliding friction and rolling friction. When a body is sliding over a surface, such as this box, the frictional force which is in action is called sliding friction. Whereas if a wheel is rolling over a surface, in that case, the frictional force which is in action is called the rolling friction. We can solve different types of friction problems, such as simple friction, ladder friction, wedge friction, and belt friction. In this video, we will focus on solving problems involving simple friction. Suppose we have a block with a certain weight resting on a flat surface. We want to find the force required to pull the box. To move the box, we need to apply a force equal to or greater than the frictional force between the box and the surface. The frictional force is directly proportional to the normal reaction force acting on the object. And it is given by a frictional force equal to mu into normal force, where mu is the coefficient of friction. Let's understand normal reaction force. When an object rests on a surface, it exerts a force due to its weight. The surface, in turn, exerts an equal and opposite force to keep the object in equilibrium. This equal and opposite force is called the normal reaction force. Coefficient of friction, mu. The coefficient of friction mu is a value that represents the frictional properties between two surfaces. It is usually provided in the problem. Let's see an example to understand this better. Consider a box with a weight of 300 newtons resting on a flat surface. The coefficient of friction between the two surfaces is given as 0.4. We need to find out the force P required to move this box. Apart from this figure, we draw another figure called the free body diagram. A free body diagram is a simplified representation showing all the different forces acting on a body. This is our box with a weight of 300 newtons. We represent the force acting due to gravity with a central downward arrow. Additionally, we have this force P which is trying to pull the box, and we need to find its value. Here, we need to apply equilibrium conditions. This means the sum of all the horizontal forces should be equal to zero, and the sum of all the vertical forces acting on the body should also be equal to zero. First, we will apply equilibrium conditions on the forces acting in the vertical direction. The sum of vertical forces should be equal to zero. In the case of vertical forces, since the weight W of the box is acting downward, the surface will offer a counteracting force known as the normal reaction. This normal reaction force is equal to the weight acting on the ground. Therefore, the normal reaction force is also equal to 300 newtons. To sum up the vertical forces, we consider forces acting vertically upward as positive and forces acting vertically downward as negative. We have the normal reaction force R, minus, the weight of the box, which is 300 newtons, equal to zero. Therefore, after rearranging, we get the value of the normal reaction force as 300 newtons. With this, we have obtained the normal reaction force. Now, 
we need to sum up the horizontal forces. If we look closely, there are two forces acting horizontally. One is the force P which is acting to the right, and the other is the frictional force F which is acting opposite to the force P. Therefore, if we apply the summation of horizontal forces, we consider forces acting to the right as positive and forces acting to the left as negative. So, force P minus force F will be equal to zero. If we rearrange this, we find that force P is equal to force F. Here, force F is the frictional force, which is given by the coefficient of friction mu times the normal reaction force. We know the values of both these quantities. Mu is 0.4 and the normal reaction force is 300 newtons. Therefore, after calculating, we find that the force P is equal to 120 newtons. I hope this helps you understand how to find the force required to move a box. This same example can have different variations. What if the force acting horizontally to the right is instead acting at an angle? In this situation, how do we find the value of P? Or, what if the box is resting on an inclined surface instead of a flat horizontal surface? In this case, how do we find the force required to pull the object? And another condition is, what if both conditions happen together? Which means the pulling force is at an angle with the horizontal, and the surface on which the box is resting is also inclined. How do we find out the force required in this condition? Watch our next videos to find out how to calculate the value of P in these different scenarios. I hope this video helped you understand friction and how to calculate the force required to pull a box. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Share this video with your friends to support my work and help me create more content for you. If you're new to my channel, ADTW Study, click the subscribe button to stay updated with all my latest videos. Thank you for watching.